Welcome to another MVP Buzz Chat. My name is Christian Buckley, and I'm here talking today with Leslie. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Christian. How are you? So this is this is our first time meeting. So for folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us that background, who you are, where you are, and what you do? All right. Well, as Christian mentioned, my name is Leslie. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the developer technology category. I'm from Dominican Republic <laughs> as a full-time developer. And uh, I consider myself I consider myself as a full-time blogger too. Okay. <laughs> the name of my blog is into Spanish because my main focus is my community. And that's the way that I started writing about technical content uh, about feature and programming in general. Um, that's where I started Dominiotics.com. Were you doing stuff for for work related or just things that you were interested in? kind of solving problems you had questions that you wanted to find answers for or all of it <laughs> sometimes i'm reading something something really interesting and i want to share with everybody about some books about programming like clean code i really like the book for example and i try to something about it or sometimes i'm working with asher and i try to share what i learned about that and and that's it. That's on my blog. <laughs> on my blog. I try to to put myself in into schedule. Like I want to talk uh, about this and this and this. But sometimes uh, by my work and everything everything that I'm doing in the moment, I just change in my mind and say, okay, yeah. Yeah. I know <laughs> I need that's, to write about this. You know, that's one of the things that I do uh, with, and I love OneNote for is because. I, I read something or somebody's speaking on the, like just today, I was doing an interview earlier today and I jotted down on a little uh, spiral like notepad that I keep down here uh, of two blog ideas and mm -hmm, I'll yeah. add them over into one note and maybe I'll come back to them or add to it and other things, but I have that rolling list. And sometimes it just, it doesn't happen. My priorities change, but yeah. You know, or other times where I'm going back, like, you know, what, what should I write about this time? And I'll look through that library of ideas, be like, oh, I started down something. Actually, there's something I want to say about that. And then put that, that content together. Yeah, that happened to me a lot when trying to create content for my blog. And also, uh, another thing that I'm taking in account is right now I'm writing in English uh, in the medium, medium platform for, and for my blog. Um, dominatic.com is in Spanish. So I try to combine one topic that I think uh, can be useful and attractive for more people, like a topic that is really important to people to know right now, because you know, technology is changing every day. Yeah. And sometimes you, you, you say, okay, I'm gonna write about Azure functions, for example, but you, you see some blogs and you see some, Today's on Twitter, then you say, mm, so right now people are uh, talking about good practices or unit tests. And so you just switch to that because, you know, people are going to be interested in that. Yeah. How, I, I mean, that's a great question of like, how, how do you balance the, I mean, because there, obviously there's topics out there that a lot of people are actively writing about. Nobody has your experience. Nobody has yeah, like it, it, the the nuances of your profile, of the customers that you work with, the the stories that you have, your life experiences. Even though you're writing about the same technology topic, you're going to have a different approach to that. But do you do you weigh that? Like, oh, there's already a lot out there. Let me go write about something different, or do you just write about the things that you want to write about? <laughs> I think uh, I think that. I mean, it's a balance. I need to take the balance of that situation. For example, some people write in a topic, but they are too in a high level, like really technical for maybe people that already know about that and need some special tips. And the thing is you can make the, the same topic, you can create different a um, kind of documentation of blogging like for an entry level middle level mm -hmm. so 
I think I think I'm loyal to to my style of displaying things, and even if other people write about it, I think I can. Uh, add something uh, different that is based on my experience. But sometimes, if you know that that topic is over, <laughs> I mean, 10 blogs yeah. about that on LinkedIn, I mean, no, I don't want to write about it because maybe the, the, the topics that I want to focus, one of them uh, have taken it down. So, yeah. Well, that, that's why I, I'm also a big fan of of you know calling out uh, doing and referencing other other bodies of work other other articles and you can almost just kind of summarize a topic if somebody else wrote and went into depth and explain that technical aspect and you can then take kind of a different direction with the rest of it say hey go take if you're looking to go in depth on how to build out this component this person wrote this great article or they've got a youtube video on that and then you can kind of take it in a different direction but kind of build off of other community content. Yeah, I think it's really important to collaborate with the community. And mm. for me, it's really important to give the credit to people that made uh, something that I feel inspired by. Uh, I really, I strongly believe for reference the books that I read and I find something useful because they deserve the credit of that. Right. Yep. <laughs> even if I, if I give something, because even if I'm writing about clean code, for example, about the book, I uh, search for another information. I mean, to add something more than what is already on the book because it doesn't make any sense to just copy everything and paste it on my blog, right? <laughs> right? right. But uh, I really want to make people to know that that is not all my idea. There's a lot of already another people to talk about it. And that's the point of that person, that's mine. Right. And so, take what you want. <laughs> so, so in, I mean, developer technologies is a pretty broad category. What do you specifically focus on? Like, what are you passionate about within that, that area? I, I'm, I'm a backend developer and I'm working on .NET and I'm a self-taught in .NET Core. <laughs> so in my way to learn, I found some interesting interesting topics and I grow about it, put it on, on my blog and even create a course of the fundamentals of .NET Core in my YouTube channel. It's right there into Spanish for my yeah. <laughs> Spanish community. Yeah. And, and that's it. I mean, I work about, uh, I try to write about what I'm working right now. For example, I really get into Azure, like really enthusiastic about the, some of the services that are available for us as developers, you know, I'm not too enthusiastic about infrastructure. <laughs> and I try to write about that, about Azure and services in, I mean, based on my role as a developer, something that I find useful and I try to share it and backend the stuff. <laughs> you know, that's, you just made me think of something too, is that, you know, there's, I mean, I, you know, I'm a big advocate for education and formal education and that side, but you know, I, I think it's a mistake to focus only on that aspect of it. There's plenty of people out there. Uh, you know, some of the, the most brilliant uh, coders, engineers that I've worked with throughout my career, um, some of them didn't have any degree. Some of them had other, like one, I would think of my, my friend, uh, Chris, who uh, is a VP of engineering now, had his degree in music and played wow. with, with the city symphony, right? For several years and they just realized, you know, that was going to be difficult for him to have a family and, you know, and, and it kind of it continued doing that. Um, but he it was always passionate about technology, but he just had a mind for it. Um, but so my, my suggestion is, I'm a huge advocate, uh, a community advocate as well, is that it's a great way for people that feel like they, don't have the right pedigree or the, the right, you know, a, a schooling background, educational background, they can still go out there, be self-taught and learn and share and do very well. And I would even argue that somebody that has a strong community background and is plugged into that and leveraging that and giving back to the community has a much better leg up on future job prospects than even somebody that comes right out of university. Now, well, I, I know it's all, I all think, a lot of things that, that depend. 
Yeah, yeah, because I have my my education like in college. Yeah. I have a two year degree in software development in I don't know if, it, if it's called the same there, but it's like an institute. It's not a college. Uh, it's previous to college is just for technical education. And okay. after that, I went to college for my engineering degree. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying that that was like your story. I just it just made me think. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. the thing is, uh, sometimes that's something that I try to encourage the the old the other people that were studying with me. Uh, not all that you need for being a good developer, you're going to learn it on college. Yeah. You have to be clear of that. You need to learn by yourself, try to find your path and try to find the things that are really useful for you. Because sometimes uh, the um, curriculum of your career is going to be really uh, general about some topics about programming and things like that. And if you don't put yourself the idea, okay, I want to be a web developer, I want to try to focus on the science or something like that, you will be an engineer at the end of your career, but you're not going to have a, a really deep knowledge in something that you want to get a job. Right. And <laughs> get yep. started. I, so I, one of my brother-in-laws um, who uh, was self-taught and did very well he just he just didn't click with a lot of school, but after years of as a developer and a front end developer and very talented, um, but finally went and did like a I don't know what you call it. It's not a it's not like a certificate program. It was very intensive, full time, but it was a technical uh, school in, in person, and it was like uh, four or five months long, very intensive because he wanted to have that formal training that he never got. He wanted to understand, you know, con it was very condensed because he was already, you had to already be a professional within the space. You couldn't just like, hey, I wanna learn to code. Like, no, that's not what this was. These were people that already knew, but like him wanted to have that formal structured education so that they could, he could go even further than his organization. And he was able to go and find you know, a job right out of that, that experience at a much higher level of pay, having completed that. Um, so there's, there's something to be said about, you know, either approach there. <laughs> I, one of the things that I love about technology though, is that so much of it, it is like, find what you're passionate about, like in an industry or building a type of thing, like you could just find something just like it, where it just really clicks. There are so many different opportunities. Hey, I've, I, I've been in tech for 30 years. I, I have a marketing. Wow. <laughs> I have a marketing degree. Yeah. yeah. So you know, my I was in marketing and on the the business side, but I was just drawn to uh, the the technology field, and just was passionate and found a place where I fit. Yeah, that's nice, and and also that's something that I uh, share with people that were studying with me. You don't have to be a programmer. There's another topic uh, that you can f uh, fit in in technology. That's a really good advantage, and you have a lot of opportunities. And that's something really important to share. Um, even for countries countries like me, uh, where people don't have, you know, a lot of options to get good jobs and and get a uh, a good income as a programmer, uh, because I know. Uh, here being a programmer, well, we are being really good paid mm -hmm. for the average of people around there. So you don't have to feel like being a web developer that just learned this and this and this. You have a lot of opportunities. You have a really different options that you can get and be a, as good as a developer. I mean, right. yeah, that science or uh, cloud architectures. I mean, well, I was even thinking like non-technical role because I, I know some of the best um, project and, and product managers have that engineering background and they just, they didn't enjoy the engineering side, but they love like the project and product creation, that that process on, yeah, the, man cool. on the management <laughs> side. And it's, it's always good to have people like it was, you know, for me to have to be stronger than business and the marketing side to pick up the technical skills. It's the, it's the same thing. You have people that lean towards the business focus, but have the technical background and there's tons of opportunities out there. You know, certainly yeah. there, I, 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 
a few times in my career where had I had a more formal, uh, uh, you know, engineering background, I would have moved up much more quickly than I did. Um, but, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, I'm always envious of people that have the engineering background, but want to get into the business or even the marketing side of things. I think have an advantage over the rest of us that don't have that. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really good. And I have a, a college uh, from my university that he's now in the business side <laughs> of technology. It, he's doing pretty well. So well, it's a little secret that that that's out there for all of the recent college grads that are thinking about careers is. Uh, uh, people that have some the tech the technical training that have an aptitude towards technology, but if you're on the business side of things, you know I think the pay scales tend to be higher than straight engineering yeah. in a lot of roles. So just you know just throwing that out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something to point out. I think there's and more jobs that are in pure technology, like more available opportunities out there for engineers, especially just in the modern era that we're in, but, but anyway. I'm going to take your concept yeah. after this meeting. <laughs> I know. Well, it's funny is because many years ago I was, well, just for a year, I w went and worked for a company um, that had, uh, a, you know, a, that was a, uh, a services company and they, they did placement and I was kind of in that world. So it's funny as I'm still in contact with people that once in a while will reach out and be like, Hey, have you heard anything about it? So like, you know, that was 20 years ago when I was in that line of work, helping people find jobs. Like, yeah, I, I can't really help now. But but as far as just advice on careers, I mean, I'm like I said, 30 years in tech, I have some opinions of where you can go and find job opportunities. And yeah, so reach out to me. Let me know if there's anybody that's out there watching that is, is, is want some help on that. So Oh, maybe me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, always happy to connect with MVPs. So, yeah. So, what else is? Uh, so, what are you passionate about? I mean, we just had Ignite. So, anything that really kind of stood out that you're really excited about? Architecture. I mean, cloud architecture for me is. Uh, I mean, like my dream job. <laughs> I mean, I just figured out that. There's a lot of things that we do in, in programming that can affect the performance of your architecture on the cloud. And sometimes as a developer, we are not aware of that till we are really into the, um, into the architecture stuff like uh, orchestrating the servers and pull all of that. And you find out that one server is being down for some reason, you have to find the service that is putting it down by the bad code. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I'm really aware of that. And I really like to learn more uh, about this topic. And I know it's a long way to go because architecture implies a lot of things uh, about infrastructure, about cloud architecture and software development as well. But I'm really happy to take it. <laughs> Well, that, that, and it's constantly, you know, changing and it, it's, um, well, it, it, you know, having worked in, uh, you come from the SharePoint side of things and, and companies moving from on-premises to the cloud. And a lot of those companies started out by just picking up and moving what we call a lift and shift of all the things that they had built for on-prem and they just moved to the cloud. Talk about architectures like, no, it's not built the same way. It's it, it, those. It's incredibly expensive to try and run the way that it was architected for on-prem out in the cloud in the way that the, the number of times, you know, the number of calls, the number of services that are running, all the systems that are hit is just, so it's, it's just a very different way of thinking and architecture and designing the solutions uh, that, that you build and run. It's, I mean, there's- Yeah, that's really exciting for me to consider about the, all the solutions and how we can try to move to the cloud, but I mean, in the more, in the less painful way <laughs> to the company. Well, there's, a, there's gonna be opportunity for years in working with companies, with customers just on that problem as they continue to transition, you know, their, again, their old, their legacy systems mm -hmm. into the cloud. 
that yeah. that's a great place for job prospects you know? <laughs> yeah I, yeah so i mean there's a lot of people like independence and that's all that they do with client after client is that's that's it uh yeah so i uh, plenty nice. of opportunity out there <laughs> For Leslie of the future. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, hey, Leslie, it was really great getting to know you. I was going to say that, that you know, over the last couple of months, I was really hoping that Microsoft was going to do an in-person MVP summit, but they just announced that it's going to be all online again, you know, given where yeah. we are, you know, which is unfortunate, but, you know, hopefully we, uh, you know, we could connect and, and do something online at some point, you know, in for folks that want to find out more about you and get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? On Twitter, of course. Yeah. <laughs> my, Leslie, uh, my handle is uh, ILESRG. And also in my blog, dominiotech.com and at Museum as Leslie Ramirez. <laughs> and of course, I'll have the links to all of those, uh, her social and her MVP profile and her, the two blogs, the two sites, the English and Spanish uh, out on my blog. So if you go to buckleyplanet.com and you search on Leslie, you'll be able to find her uh, profile there in the video and the podcast and, and all that information. So, well, Leslie, really appreciate your time and, and getting to know you. I think you're, in fact, I was looking through my list. I think you're the first person that I've interviewed from Dominican Republic. There, do you know how many MVPs there are? In my country, yeah, there are eight, and we are four women in the MVP program. And I mean, we have three MVPs in the in the same category category as me as developer technology. Uh, one of them is Lomari Reyes. She's uh, she talks about Tamarin and now Maui. <laughs> and Charlene uh, also, and we have a lot of MVPs. <laughs> yeah, it's the MVP site does not make it easy. Like you can't go search by country. They just, Microsoft doesn't provide it like that. And unless MVPs have the words Dominican Republic in their profile doing a search, you know, you'll only find those that they it's included there. Like there's one MVP that's listed who lives in Spain, but he's originally from the Dominican Republic. And yeah, so, one of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, but it's so it's always it's it's great. Do you guys ever get together? Or have you talked about that? Yeah, for example, we have um we are planning to get together for an in-person meeting in this year <laughs> if it's yeah. possible with all the schedules. <laughs> it, it's it's difficult. Well, we so we we've tried uh so here in where I am, I'm based uh, south of Salt Lake City, Utah, and there are four or five MVPs that are within like a two hour radius of, of the area. And we've done like a, I think it's now quarterly call uh, to try and keep in touch, but even then we're not consistent ar around it. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's just another way to, to for community to come together and connect and share ideas, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of hard, but it's really important to keep connected with our community. Yeah, so that's definitely. that's the way that I started writing and being an MVP through the community. But that's well, the story for another day. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for your time and uh, hope to connect with you soon. Thank you so much for the invitation. Have an excellent day. And everyone around there, thank you for sharing this moment with us. <laughs> wow. Wow.